So, what you looked at in GMAW fundamentals, we looked at the system. So, we looked at the force balance, right? So, the metal transfer forces and we looked at melting rate or we calculate the melting rate, right? And then we looked at the transfer modes and the influence of current on the transfer mode, okay? So, what are the advantages and disadvantages in the transfers we see? And then, uh, yeah, so we are here. Move on to the, the another variant of uh, consumer welding process, which is the by volume the most widely used uh, welding process. It means number of man hours spent in welding, the SMAW or manual metal arc welding by far the largest most used welding process. Okay. So, it is very easy to use, very uh, user friendly because you do not need complex systems, you just need to burn the electrode. And you do not need a shielding gas in most of the cases because the most of them are self shielded. So, the electrode I showed you, so this is a typical electrode where you have an, a, a metal core, okay, the metal rod and then a flux. Okay. So, the flux contains uh, most of the cases the oxides. Okay. So, you can also change the basicity of the system by either having an, uh, uh, titanium oxide or rutile based flax, slax forming during welding or alumina based slags or calcium carbonate systems or you can also have a calcium fluoride systems CAF2 and based on the, the chemical composition, we can also choose the, 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 the flux used for the, the actual coating, right. So, we will see in, in the subsequent slides, but what you need to identify understand here in this case is, so in this case the electrode is a, a self shielded electrode. So, where you have a metal core and a, a flux on top of the metal core and this flux contains the elements which promote the shielding gas generation as well as they control the liquid surface tension and the viscosity of the molten droplet. Right? So, we can have a, a, a basic slab, basic electrode or fluoride based electrodes. In most of the cases, the flux contains a calcium carbonate to generate carbon dioxide and then we add the other fluxes like titanium oxide okay, or calcium fluoride to change the the surface tension and the thermal physical property of the liquid metal, so that a droplet transfer can be promoted in like either globular or in spray mode, right. Okay. The system is very simple, so you just need a power source which can give a low voltage current. So, once you have a simple power source which can generate the arcing waveform with low voltage and reasonably high current and you can use that power source to strike an arc between the electrode and the base material. And most of the cases arc is struck by short circuiting okay, because power source for MMAW is are very simple. You may not see a welding uh, MMAW power source with high frequency ignition because high, fre high frequency ignition is you need to have an high frequency unit to strike an arc uh, with the non-contact ignition where most of the cases the arc is struck by short circuiting and then you can retract and form a stable arc and then uh, during this process the flux is also decomposes forming uh, the shielding we, what we need uh, what is needed for the sustained discharge during welding. Okay. And during this process you also form a slag and slag protects the, the well pool because when you have an oxide slag, oxides or fluorides and they are not only change the surface tension and they also form a slag and which protects the molten pool from the 
atmosphere oxidation and uh, the vaporization. Okay, so this is an electric contract like if you look at a schematic a typical the electrode and you have an, a core, core is the metal wire and then you have a top the flux coat and the, the, these fluxes burn and most of the cases uh, they contain calcium carbonate, it burns into CaO and CO2 and this is the oxide slag. Right, and similarly, the flux may also contain titanium. This is rutile, okay, or calcium fluoride, and we can also add the alloying elements in the flux. Suppose if you want to increase the manganese content of the droplet, so you can also add ferromanganese in the flux, okay, and if you want to change the composition of the, the, the metal core, a metal core can be simple, simple plain carbon, iron carbon steel, but you can also change the droplet composition by adding the alloying elements in the flux. Okay? So, for example, most commonly the ferro alloys like ferro manganese and ferro boron okay? and these are ferro chromium, these are also added because when you make the wire you can make it with very simple composition, you do not need to go for suppose if you want to add boron of uh, say 50 ppm or if you want to increase the manganese concentration of the droplet subsequently well pool to high manganese, you do not need to go for high manganese wire. So, you can add ferro manganese in the flux and that will integrate, uh, disintegrate and then it forms the alloying manganese with the droplet and you end up getting a droplet the composition of your requirement. So, you can also play around the composition of the droplet by adding ferrolize in the flux. Yes, it is clear. Now, the process is very simple. You ignite an arc by short circuiting and subsequently the vents, yeah. So, uh, what if the alloying element come out as slag? It will come out. For example, aluminum. Yeah. Okay. It is very difficult to add aluminum in the flux. Then how will we decide like if we want this composition of the, like if yeah. this percentage of aluminum in the way, some part of it will come out. Yeah, so then you need to have a proper calculation, so this called burden calculations you need to do. Okay, so most of the cases the aluminum is very difficult to add or you need to very difficult to create aluminum containing droplet because aluminum always oxidize. So, recovery of aluminum in the well pool is, is nil. So, that is why when you want to have an aluminum added to the pool, you always add in the wire okay? and then have a proper sealing so that an aluminum does not oxidize. So, recovery of aluminum from the flax is very difficult, you do not really because aluminum readily oxidizes. Okay? So, if you add a ferro aluminum, you will never get anything you will get in most of the cases not even more than 0 0.2 weight percent aluminum. Okay, so, in that case you need to play around with the alloying element in the wire itself or in the base material, so that you can have a dilution from the base material coming to the workpiece. Yes, it is clear? Good. So, again it is simple, so you melt the wire and then drop it is transferred and it is also protected by the shielding. And then the, the, the flux also makes a slag layer on top of the molten pool and you can break off the slag layer upon welding. Yes, it is clear? How it is done? Yes. Hmm. Which is? Yeah. No, flux does not melt. So, the calcium carbonate disintegrates at much lower temperatures around 600 degrees centigrade. So, when you have short circuiting, you also heat up the the flux and you would start disintegrating the flux for example calcium carbonate. Okay, so, by 600 degrees centigrade it will start disintegrating into carbon dioxide, so then you would already start generating carbon dioxide okay? and then uh, the, the, the arc ignition is same as we saw in uh, ignition arc ignition mechanism during short circuiting. So, you have a uh, joule heating effect and during this process you also generate carbon dioxide right? and then you pull it slowly and then you form a neck 
and then you have an uh, and Lorentz force again the nick forms heats up enormous amount temperature is heated up so obviously so then on, once you have the the wire the, the wire is or the, the electrode is retracted you strike an arc by the thermionic emission right so the same principle okay the only trick is to generate sufficient gas carbon dioxide co2 and that can happen in much lower temperature Right? It's clear. Okay. The process is very simple. You don't need a complex uh, the power source. As long as the power source can give you low voltage current, then it should be all right. You can strike an arc. That's why this process is extremely simple and doesn't need any uh, complicated uh, the setups. And you don't need a ceiling gas in most of the cases. That's why it's for a low end applications, for high volume applications. The metal metal arc welding or a, a cylinder metal arc welding is very widely used. And most of the cases, the electrode is like a like a stick, right? That's why it's also known as stick welding. Okay, so a stick welding. Okay, good. So what are the characteristics? Uh, the the equipment requirements are very simple. Okay, so if you want to repair a weld your uh, uh, the motorbike, you take it to a garage. And most of the cases, you'll be doing a stick welding, SMAW welding, and you can do it by yourself. Okay, so when you are uh, uh, for a first year uh, BTEC students, uh, we have welding workshop, and most of the cases, we let the students to weld by SMAW. Okay, so the, 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 you get the feel of uh, the welding, and it is a very very dirty process because the fumes you generate. Especially the manganese fumes, it's carcinogenic. Okay, and also the oxides, the the fluxes when they burn, you inhale the welding fumes, and it is not good for health. Okay, so that's why the the, the welders' respiratory diseases are much higher than in in any other uh, jobs because of the welding fumes. Welding fumes are not really good for human body. So the prolonged exposure to the welding fumes by burning of fluxes, also the vaporization of uh, the metals, it's not uh, really good. But yeah, so that's life. So because of the low cost and high productive uh, nature of this process, it's very widely used, and we can also play around uh, with the consumables, chemistries, by changing the, the, the uh, either the, the core wire composition or by manipulating the flux composition, you can generate very wide range of consumables. Okay, so, and it's a very very extreme portable process. You can have a small uh, rectifier inverter system which can give uh, a low current, uh, low voltage current, and you can carry wherever you want, and you can just take it as a suitcase and uh, go around. Okay, and then uh, you start building. The efficiency is quite low because the radiation, the heat transfer from the arc is extremely high. Okay, and you also use the heat in the arc to burn the flux, and the the, the slags you know, which also carry the heat from the arc, and it is not transferred back to the workpiece. So the efficiency is low compared to GMAW. Okay, because uh, the the arc, the B column, is also observed. By the fluxes, okay. So you have additional uh, heat taken away by the flux when they burn and the second they integrate. The heat in the arc column is taken away by the burning and then uh, melting of uh, fluxes. So the efficiency comes down, and also the process is uh, open to atmosphere. So you also have radiative and convective heat losses, and it is most of the cases done manually. That's why it's a manual metal arc welding. Okay, so you need to have a, a trained labor to carry out this process. And when you use a stick electrode and metal metal electrode, it, it's difficult to make it continuous or automated because the electrode is uh, over. Then you need to change the electrode. Okay, so you can't make it a continuous electrode because when you make it continuous, the flux gets broken. Okay. So it's very widely used for structural fabrications. 
so, so for building bridges for example, uh, for fabricating a simple uh, uh, construction uh, uh, buildings. So, these kind of uh, the metal metal arc welding electrodes are very widely used and ship building as well. So, if as I said in a, in a, in a typical ship you have a kilometer of wells. Okay, so, these wells are made by metal metal arc welding okay, and heavy engineering applications, earth movers for example, welding thicker sections, these are done with the metal metal arc welding, right, it is clear, okay, good. So, the consumable perspective, there is a very wide range of consumables are available. And we can also play around the microstructures, okay. So, by controlling uh, uh, the microstructure, we can also get the very good toughness. The main disadvantage of using MMAW is hydrogen absorption in the flux, okay. So, so if you expose the electrode to atmosphere, when you can't weld as such, you need to heat the electrode above. Uh, above 100 or 150 degrees centigrade to vaporize the, the entire volume of the moisture, moisture accumulation condensation, okay. Because the flux is very poor a structure. So, when you keep the electrode at room atmosphere, it gathers moisture, okay. So, when you elect weld the electrode as such after keeping outside in room atmosphere, Okay. And you also generate hydrogen by disintegration of the moisture. So, so that would uh, lead to the hydrogen diffusion in the well pool. Subsequently, the weld would undergo hydrogen embrittlement. Okay. So, when you uh, when the stick electrode is used, when you receive from the company which makes the, the electrode, you always receive the electrodes in a, a very nicely packed humidity controlled envelope where the, the, the packing ensures no hum humidity condensation of the electrode. So, once you moment you open the envelope, you need to keep the electrode in a very controlled atmosphere chamber, okay. Otherwise, before welding you always need to preheat the electrode to a temperature 100 to 125, not more 150 to make sure that the, the condensed moisture is uh, evaporated, right? And then you can use start welding. If you don't do that, the most likely you will have hydrogen embrittlement issues. Okay. So, so we can also play around with the the fluxes to improve uh, the transfer characteristic as well as the well pool dynamics. So we looked at an activated TIG, right? A TIG. So we add oxide fluxes or fluoride fluxes. So, these fluxes favorably change the surface tension of the well pool, okay. So, if you add those fluxes and you also improve the well pool dynamics, so you can achieve the uh, better penetration by changing the, 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 the composition of the fluxes, right. So, for example, you can also change the composition much easily. So, I have given two graphs. So, comparing uh, 2.5 percent nickel electrode and common wax, common wax electrode and uh, by changing the nickel composition, we can achieve a very good crack depopulating dip displacement, toughness can increase, can be increased significantly. So, this kind of following strategy we can think about to improve the metallurgy of the, the well pool, right. In a GMAW it is not possible, what you give the filler that is what is going to happen except you may lose some elements, it is very difficult to you know, control the, the allying strategy in GMAW because that is fixed by the filler composition. And here you can play around with the, the fluxes, so you can generate your own uh, composition of the well pool. Okay, so, the metal transfer uh, in most of the cases in uh, SMAW, it is globular assisted by the, the fluxes. Okay. The droplet diameter is much smaller because surface tension decreases, 
by the addition of uh, the fluxes, especially I mean rutile containing titanium oxide containing electrodes. It can influence surface tension in such a way that the droplet can be detached with much smaller diameter, right? Good. 